Welcome to Manifested Publishers. Welcome learners. My name is Stephen Kariungi and we continue with our topic of discussion and this is classification 2, a topic in biology form 3. Uh, today I would like us to get into the classes of kingdom plantae and specifically I would like us to discuss class bryophyta. So in the class bryophyta is where we earlier said that uh, we have the least advanced plants in the kingdom plantae and we have examples include mosses also known as the moss plant and the liverworts. the liverworts. These are very small plants uh, that uh, are just a few centimeters in size, just a few centimeters in size. Uh, the next thing that we look at are the characteristics. Um, in terms of the characteristics, uh, we say that uh, some of the members of the class bryophyta are differentiated into roots, uh, stem, and leaves. For example, the mosses or the moss plant is differentiated. An example of funaria. Uh, liverworts are undifferentiated. You cannot tell that this is the uh, stem and these are the leaves. It's not differentiated. So the one that is not differentiated, we use the term thalloid. Thalloid means undifferentiated, undifferentiated. So we can basically say that uh, some, e.g. the moss, are differentiated into roots, stem, and leaves. They are differentiated while liverworts are undifferentiated undifferentiated what we refer to as thalloid thalloid means undifferentiated and we are going to have a structure of uh, the moss and the structure of the liverworts and we'll be able to see what do we mean when we say that uh, one is differentiated, the, one, the other one is not. So, for example, we'll have we'll have the moss here. Having the leaves. So that's an example of the fan plant. No, sorry, the moss plant. Uh, this is the moss plant, also known as the funaria. Uh, to label, so for the moss, this one is uh, differentiated. We can see the root-like structures. We refer to them as rhizoids. We have a rhizoid there. Then we have the leaves. You can see the leaf there. Then we have a certain collection. We have a certain collection where the leaves are clustered. And we refer to that as the gametophyte. Gametophyte. Of course, it's the one that bears gametes. Then we have the part that is filamentous. 
and this one we re refer to it as the sporophyte. It's the one that bears the spores and at the tip it's swollen to form something that is called the capsule and then we have a filament. So the filament and the capsule make the sporophyte. The capsule is the one that bears the spores. So we refer to that part as the sporophyte. On the lower part, we have the gametophyte. The gametophyte is the one that bears the gametes. So we can say that this particular uh, plant is differentiated. It's differentiated, as we have said, into roots, stem, and leaves. And also, it's showing alternation of generations. There is a, 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 an existence in two generations. That is the sporophyte and the gametophyte, two generations. And that's what we said, alternation of generations. On the other hand, uh, we'll take an example of the liverwort, which is thalloid. It's not differentiated. So the liverwort is a heart-shaped uh, structure consisting of the rhizoids. So we have the rhizoid there. can be able to see it there. Then there is this part uh, that we refer to as the prothallus that is not differentiated. And it's the one that consists of two parts. There is the upper part, we refer to it as the Archigonia. And this one is the one that bears female gametes. Bears female gametes. Then we have this part, we refer to it as Antheridia. And it's the one that bears male gametes. So basically, the whole of this structure here forms the gametophyte. Forms the gametophyte because it's the one that has the antheridia that bears the male gametes and the archegonia that bears the, the female gametes. Then we have uh, the sporophyte up here. Yes, it's the same color. We have the sporophyte up here. And the sporophyte, just as we have indicated in the other diagram, it has a capsule that bears the gametes and it has the filament. In fact, we have a name for this filament. Let's just give it a specific name. It's called the setter. That's the, the filament. Let's call it the setter for both cases. It's referred to as the setter. So we have that. So basically, uh, whatever we have up here, is the sporophyte. So the part that is up there, the capsule and the, the setter is the sporophyte. So generally again we can see that the liverwort shows the existence in two generations, the gametophyte and the sporophyte. The gametophyte bears the gametes, the sporophyte bears the, the, the spores. So we have explained the uh, two characteristics, the differentiation of the moss and the undifferentiation of the liverwort. Then we have also explained the second characteristic is that uh, they show alternation of generations whereby gametophyte 
is the persistent plant is the persistent plant so the main part is the gametophyte is the persistent plant another characteristic uh, that we can get from the class bryophyta is that uh, uh, this particular class does not have the vascular system so we don't have the xylem and the phloem so it lacks the vascular system and therefore we can say that uh, therefore transport occurs by diffusion the size is small the, the plants are small they cannot fit a vascular system or a transport system but diffusion enhances the transport of uh, materials from one point to another um, also the members of uh, class bryophyta are multicellular made of multiple cells many cells and eukaryotic eukaryotic means that uh, their nucleus is enclosed by a nuclear membrane all the members of the kingdom plantae they are uh, uh, eukaryotic and also another point just to emphasize about the uh, the gametophyte is that uh, archegonia bears the female gametes while antheridia bears the male gametes bears the male gametes and based on that uh, we can also say that uh, they have sexual reproduction they have sexual reproduction which is dependent on water sexual reproduction which is dependent on water and that's why you find that most of the bryophytes uh, we find them in the damp areas we find them in damp areas because sexual reproduction is dependent on on water for example a place where water is trickling you'll find the moss plant growing there something that looks like a green carpet yeah so that's an ex uh, that's uh, an explanation that uh, their mode of sexual reproduction is dependent on the presence of water so we are going to stop there and then we'll have an assignment on the same so the first question what is the function of a and the ridia and b ashigonia and then number two explain why bryophytes are found in damp areas so we'll stop there until next time goodbye